crafty friends welcome to today's video in today's video i am going to make this card a birthday card that i created with a stamp and coordinating die i thought i would recreate it for you to show you how i did it and also give you some tips and tricks and hacks along the way so this is the stamp and the die that i'm going to use today it says happy birthday to an amazing person it's a silicon stamp that came from a relatively cheap set that I bought on Amazon. It was a stamp and the die set together. The first thing I'm gonna do is make a jig and I'm gonna cut the die cut from smooth white cardstock. And I want to keep both parts of this. And then I'm gonna use my stamp positioner I'm going to pop that in there. It is square there, so it should fit quite nicely, but I'm also going to tape it down so that it won't move at all, really, while I'm doing my stamping. So this is the jig part. This is going to hold my die cuts in place while I stamp on them. So a little bit of extra tape on there. If you've got a stamp positioner with a sticky mat or a grip mat in, then you won't need the tape, probably. Then I'm going to put my die cut back in there and then I'm going to take my stamp and I'm going to put it on there and get it lined up absolutely as best I can. I'm going to put my head in the way. We'll skip that bit though. So I think that is as perfectly lined up as it's going to get. I'm going to pick up my stamp, make sure that's all still where I left it. And I'm going to, this is going to be a test stamp, but it's, if it works, then it's going to be something I can keep, something I can use. So just a bit of black ink on there. That's where it should be. Press it down. I'm going to hold it down for a good few seconds because with silicon stamps, the ink can bead up on silicon stamps and you don't always get a good transfer of ink. Holding it down for a little bit longer can help with that. There we go. So that looks great to me. That's all lined up. But I just noticed that there is a hair right there underneath my stamp that's transferring some ink. So I'll just get rid of that. Wipe that off carefully so as not to move it on the stamp platform because I want that to stay exactly where it is. And I'm going to dry that with a microfiber cloth. If this is the first time you've used your stamp, you can prepare it by keying the surface with a sand eraser. It's just a rough eraser that roughs up the surface of the stamp ever so slightly, which helps the ink stick to it. And I'll just brush off the little bits of eraser that got stuck to the stamp. So that should take the ink a little better. So without moving the jig, although it doesn't matter because it's square, you can just push it back into the corner if you do move it. I'm going to remove my stamp, not my stamp, my stamped die cut. We can pop this to one side. We don't need to worry about that moving because it's all stuck down. The next thing I'm gonna do is cut seven more of these die cuts because I want a rainbow of die cuts as well as a black die cut, a black inked die cut. So I'm going to just cut seven then I'll come back to you. So now I've got seven die cuts ready to stamp on. That's where it should be, it hasn't moved. I'm going to pop that one in there, make sure it's exactly in the right place. I'm going to take a coloured ink. So I'm using Catherine Pooler inks today from the Spa Collection. We've got Pink Champagne, Apricot, Shea Butter, Matcha, Skylight, Tranquil and Serene. And the reason I've chosen the Spa Collection is because they're slightly muted colours. They're not as bright as the party collection, which will bring colour to my card, but not grab focus from my main die cut. So I've inked that up. I'm going to hold that down for a few seconds. 
and I'm going to give it a second going over and that is that one done and then I get my next colour I'm going to clean off that with my microfiber cloth and I'm going to get apricot and do the same thing Now with these inks, they can sometimes look a bit blotchy when you first stamp them, but after a few minutes, they smooth out beautifully. They're really lovely like that. It's, it's a kind of magic, really, I think. So I'm going to do the rest of my colours and come back when I've got all my die cuts coloured. So here we are. All of my sentiments are stamped perfectly in the same place on all of my die cuts because I used the jig to position each die cut and then stamped it. So that's a really quick and easy way of doing multiple die cuts. You're not doing a stamp and then trying to line up the die perfectly every time. You die cut a jig, you pop your die cuts in the jig and then you can stamp, stamp, stamp as many as you like. You can go on for hundreds and hundreds if you want. So while I have got my die cut machine out. I'm going to die cut some other bits. I want a vellum banner for the black birthday sentiment to stick on and I'm going to add a little shim because sometimes this particular die doesn't cut through vellum first time. So if you find your dies aren't cutting first time just add a little bit of scrap paper, scrap cardboard and that will increase the pressure a little bit and you will get a perfect die cut and then I've got five little butterflies now these cut out a butterfly shape and then emboss some patterns on them so then we've got five gold butterflies some of them well four of them it's only the little tiny one that doesn't have an embossed pattern on because it's too small really I guess so that's all my die cutting done Next, I have a card blank. This is a five and three quarter by five and three quarter inch smooth white cardstock card blank. And I'm going to stick my sentiments on. But before, no, not that one. We're going to do the rainbow first. But before I stick them on, I'm going to keep them in rainbow order and add some tape to the back. And that will just make it so much easier to get these stuck down quickly. When you do something with repeat patterns like the card I'm doing today, it's great to batch things. So die cut everything first, stamp everything together, stick tape on everything, and then you can just go for it. It just so happens that with this particular stamp and this particular die and this particular card blank, I can get seven down in a really nice cascade with a pleasing gap between each one. I probably couldn't have planned this if I tried. It just happened. When I went to put everything together, it just worked. So I've got my pink one here with it hanging off the edge so that it's going to look like it's part of a continuous pattern. And then my next one's coming in and I'm putting the B directly underneath the R. And my T-square ruler is just here to help me get my sentiments stuck straight. So again, with the, T, the B rather underneath the R and a similar size gap there and there. I missed out the orange. I didn't get keep them in alphabetical order. Not alphabetical, <laughs> rainbow order. It doesn't matter that it's messing up the uh, top of the card. Because I'm just going to stick that straight on top. Right, B under the R. A little gap, not too big. So that's red, orange, yellow. You'd think I'd know my uh, rainbow order being an ex-science teacher.
Right, so we've got my rainbow of sentiments. I'm just going to snip off the bits that are hanging over. Now, to create my main sentiment. So these are quite light and muted, but this is quite bold. So this is the focal point. I'm going to use some foam strips behind this sentiment like that and add that to the vellum banner so again the vellum is there to mute down what's behind the focal point so that it helps the focal point stand out and now i can put some tape on the back because that'll be hidden by the main sentiment and get my t-square ruler again just line that up nicely so the vellum and the foam help make this one the focal point. They help tell your eye where to look because the black is very bold against these more muted colours and the dimension there says, look at me. Speaking of look at me, I've got these gold butterflies. I'm going to add foam again to four of them. The little tiny one, I'm going to put flat on the card because I'm never going to be able to cut foam to fit behind that. I could have popped some foam on it before I die cut it, but I think that'll be fine, just flush on the card. And now what am I looking for? These, <laughs> I knew they were somewhere. And I'm going to cut some little, little bits to fit behind the wings of my butterfly. So this big one can have these long ones. And that's another tip. I think if you want small bits of foam, cut them while they're still on the backing rather than after you've taken them off. They won't cut, they won't stick to your uh, scissors or your craft knife that way. And then I'm going to take all the bits off, all the release paper. And again, this, having these butterflies clustered around this black sentiment is saying this is the focal point look at me i know it's all busy but look at me so i think i will actually put that one flush as well get a bit of glue out and we can dip them in So the butterflies are drawing your eye to that black sentiment. I might see if I can move this one over slightly. Oh, I think I want to bring it in a bit more. Not so there. Yeah, I think we'll do that. And as a last finishing touch and yet another way to draw the eye towards the focal point, I'm going to add some gold Nouveau drops, cluster them around the focal point. So even though I've got a lovely rainbow of colours in the background, this is saying, look at me, I'm the focal point. And that just helps the eye and the brain know where to look when you're looking at a card. You look at that first and then you can look at the rest and take it in as a whole. So there we go, two cards made exactly the same way. I hope you found the tricks and tips and hacks useful. If you have, do leave a thumbs up, do let me know in the comments, come over to the Facebook group and share some of your card creations there. If you want to see more from me, do subscribe and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.